Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of MacBreak Studio. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my audio finishing process using Rolls. Before I get into the audio work, let's define a term that is often bandied about in post-production circles. And that term is finishing. Finishing is usually the last step in the process where you address any picture or sound concerns that could detract from the story. For audio, it's making sure that all your dialogue, music, and effects are at the required levels, and that your final mix is enhanced using common audio processing effects like EQs and compressors. So with that, let's get started. Here we are in Final Cut with a short edit of a film Steve and I worked on. Let's take a look. So right now I'm in a ghost town called Nelson, Nevada. It's also known for alien activity. For the past 80 years, for reasons inexplicable, families on vacation would be heading to Las Vegas and for some unknown reason, they just make a right turn on Interstate 95 and end up here. They stop, they get out, they take a break and then they disappear for the rest of their lives. Well, according to the government, there's no such thing as Area 51. Well, there actually is on a map, you can pinpoint it, but in terms of its relationship to extraterrestrial activity, the government uh, denies just about everything. Who knew Steve was into aliens? A big part of audio finishing is assigning roles. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term roles, it's simply a metadata tag that defines the type of audio you are working with, such as dialogue, music, and or effects. Roles are automatically assigned during the import process, but often Final Cut Pro does not tag them correctly. Here you can see that this music clip is assigned a dialogue role. To change the role, right-click on the clip and choose Assign Audio Roles then choose the appropriate role. You can do this on a single clip or multiple selected clips. To be honest, I don't usually take the time to assign all my roles in the browser because they can just as easily be changed in the timeline, which is my preferred method. For this project, everything in the timeline is currently tagged as a dialog role. Now Steve's audio should remain as dialog, but I need to tag the other clips properly. This is important, as you'll see soon enough, because these roles will allow me to organize my mix. I'll open the Timeline Index and choose Roles, then choose Show Audio Lanes so you can see how the magnetic timeline automatically organizes your audio for you. I'll start with the desert wind effect here. If your audio clips don't have descriptive names to help you identify them, just select the clip and press Option S to solo it and play back. I'll press Option S again to unsolo. Then, just as I did in the browser, I'll right click on the clip and choose Assign Audio Roles, then Effects. Notice the effect moves into the effects lane of the timeline and is assigned the teal effects color. Next, I'll tag this Alien Chaos clip. Again, I'll right click and choose Assign Audio Roles. This time, I'll select Music. The clip is assigned a green color and moves into the music lane. The foreboding resonance clip here is kind of a creepy music effect, but I want it to be separate from my other effects and music. I'll right click choose Assign Audio Roles, and then Edit Roles. In this window, I can create additional roles and create sub-roles. For example, I often create a room tone role, but for now, I just want to assign this clip as a music sub-role. I'll hover my mouse over the music role and click the Add Sub-Role button. A sub-role is simply a subcategory within the main role group. I'll name it Music 2 and click Apply. Then, I'll right click on the foreboding resonance clip and assign the new audio subroll. It turns green and moves down. A great use for subrolls is for identifying audio for different speakers. If Mark was in this video, I would create a dialogue subroll for Steve and one for Mark. One last thing about tagging containers like synced, multicam, and compound clips can't be tagged directly. You will need to open the clip and tag the clips inside the container. Once you step out, the container will reflect the new tag. If you have multiple roll tags in a single container, the clip will turn gray. 
Here's what the timeline looks like once everything has been tagged. So why does role tagging matter? Notice in the timeline index that the effects role is currently at the bottom. I'll drag it to the top to give it a higher priority. Notice all the clips tagged as effects move to the top. Honestly, this is one of the coolest features of the magnetic timeline and something you cannot do in a track-based NLE. Over the years, I've heard people express frustration with the magnetic timeline and how clips just go everywhere. But if you learn to work with roles, they actually make you more organized and efficient. If I click this button for each role, I enable and disable their lanes individually. The lanes kind of resemble, well, I hate to say it, but tracks. And I still have the ability to change the order of any lane, even during playback. And they just make a right turn on Interstate 95 and end up here. They stop, they get out. And as you saw earlier, I can show or hide all audio lanes by clicking this button here. This button will expand or collapse the sub roles. Notice my music sub role has its own lane as well. Lastly, this button here will focus the timeline on a specific role, collapsing all other roles to give you more timeline real estate. I'll disable the focus. Let's get back to finishing. The next thing on my to-do list would be to normalize all similarly tagged clips. For example, I would adjust the volume right now, of all my dialogue clips until they are normalized to a consistent level. In most cases, that would be an average volume of negative 12 dBFS on the meters, with an occasional peak at negative 6 dBFS. I'll have more to say about proper levels at the end. Once all the roll groups have been normalized, I'm ready for a final mixdown, which happens to be my favorite part. I'll press Command A to select all the clips, then press Option G to create a compound clip. I'll name this clip Mixdown and click OK. My timeline is now packaged up into a single clip container, but I still have access to all the role groups for mixing. I still have the ability to change the lane priority, but it only works when lanes are showing. I'll hide them. Then right click on the compound clip and choose Expand Audio Components. This is essentially the same thing we were just looking at with lanes enabled but changing the role order no longer works. If you want to change the order, make sure lanes are showing in the timeline index. Great, I can now adjust the overall level of each individual role group, add volume keyframes, and audio effects. These audio components are now acting like channel strips on a mixer. If I hide my lanes or collapse audio components, the main container would act as a master bus. Whatever change I make to the main or top level of the container in this case will affect all the role groups contained within it. Now I can work on my individual roles, adjusting levels and applying effects as needed. A common question that often comes up has to do with audio effect processing order. For example, should I apply a compressor before an EQ or apply an EQ before a compressor? If you Google this question, you'll find many differing opinions. The right answer can depend on many factors, such as the type of audio you're working with. But ultimately, the first rule is always do what sounds best. And by the way, you really should be working with high quality studio speakers placed at ear level. Just as you want to color grade without a good reference monitor, you shouldn't mix without proper speakers. Also, when finishing audio, you should listen to your mix on multiple devices before finalizing, like on a phone and consumer speakers, for example. Getting back to effect processing order, Here's a quick guideline. Corrective effects like noise gates, expanders, or noise reduction, I typically apply first because they will be working on the dry or unaffected audio signal. In the audio inspector, the first effect will always appear at the top of the list. After applying the corrective effect, I apply EQs and or compressors. The order of these can be changed, but I prefer to have the EQ applied before my compressor. This is because the EQ allows me to target specific frequencies and carve out the voices from the background. If I use a compressor first, I'm stomping on the signal, making it more challenging to make subtle changes to the EQ curve. In general, I apply my compressor last because that effect will determine my final levels. Also, you could use a limiter in place of or in conjunction with a compressor. But a Compro's compressor comes from Logic and has a built-in limiter. If you are applying a limiter separate from the compressor, I recommend applying it last. You may want to apply a limiter to the top level of the container, ensuring that your entire mix never exceeds your desired level. I'd like to take a moment now to give any audio engineer out there a chance to correct me in the comments below. Once I've applied my effects, I'll double check my levels. 
You can easily adjust the volume right on the roll itself vacation would be heading to Las Vegas and for someone or within the volume slider in the inspector. Dialogue should always be the most prominent audio in your mix and everything else should be mixed against it. A good guideline for levels is as follows. Dialogue around negative 12 dBFS, music around negative 20, and sound effects between negative 10 and negative 20 dBFS. Again, this is a guideline and can differ for creative reasons. Just make sure if you're delivering for the web, you keep the overall mix under negative six. If you're finishing for a festival or broadcast, you should check with the broadcaster or appropriate person for the level standard required. This is also the point in the process where you may need to duck music or effects under the dialogue. You can do this by adding keyframes in the inspector or directly on the roll by option clicking and then adjusting levels as needed. Even though I do appreciate a good mixer, I've learned to take advantage of Final Cut Pro's roles. And while I don't find myself really missing a mixer for the most part, I do have one major bone to pick with this process. If I need to make a change to my edit, I can simply open the compound clip. This is fine. But when doing so, I can no longer hear all of the audio work I performed in the context of my edit here. I really wish Apple would create some sort of toggle or checkbox that would allow me to hear the mix down when I'm inside the compound clip. So that's my audio finishing workflow. We're always interested in your comments, so leave those below. If you're interested in more in-depth Final Cut Pro tutorials, we're running a 30% off sale until July 11th using the code on the screen. And with that, thanks for watching. <laughs>